one of the Thai terms for a mind that has really good, firm, reliable principles inside, is that the heart has a post. This relates to the way buildings are built in Thailand. Say a house is built up on stilts, but the first thing you got to put up is the first post. Once that post is in place, then you can put everything else up together, and everything leans on that first post. Or you can take a John Lee's image of the post planet at the edge of the sea. The water rises. The post doesn't rise with water. The water subsides. The post doesn't go out with the tide. You want your mind to be firmly planted like that. This is what we're trying to develop as we develop the mind in concentration and also with the practice of virtue and generosity. Good, solid post in the mind. Because if the mind is, isn't firmly planted like this, it's like a post that's just lying there on the, on the beach. The water rises and the post gets washed up with the water and washed back out. It gets worn down. And it can crash into other people. So try to make your mind firmly planted here in the present moment. And think about what principles you have. The world undergoes lots of changes, like that chant we had just now. The body ages, grows ill, dies. We get separated from the people we love, the things we love. And these are the basic principles, and a lot of times they get worked out in really unexpected ways. So what do we have inside that's really firm? Well, part of it's our conviction that our actions are what really matter, and that we can learn how to develop a refuge inside, so that we don't have to depend on things being a certain way. If this has to be that way and that has to be this way, the mind is really weak. You want a mind that's able to live with lots of different possibilities without abandoning its principles. All too many people think that well, Buddhism is all okay about change, so why couldn't we just change the Dharma, change the teachings to suit us? What's wrong with that? It's because you can't really depend on anything that way. The whole purpose of the teaching is to give you something you can depend on. This is what the Buddha saw as his primary responsibility. When he taught about action, he said, if you believe that everything is determined from the past, nothing can be changed, you're left without a refuge. If you believe that everything is random, you're left without a refuge. In other words, you can't really figure out what you should and shouldn't do. This is what it means to have a refuge, is to have a sense of what you should and shouldn't do. Or at least to give the mind a way of figuring things out. to see what is the best way to act. You have to hold the principle that no matter what the situation is, there's a skillful way of dealing with it. And even if you can't figure out what is the most skillful way of dealing with a situation, you want to go with what seems to be the most skillful thing you can think of. And if you have trouble thinking of something that might be skillful, in other words, it doesn't involve any breaking of the precepts, and it doesn't involve harming yourself or others. Then you step back. This is one of the gifts of meditation, is it gives you a place to step back and just observe, to put down your preconceived notions and watch, and feel secure in the watching. Even with something as simple as the breath. When people ask, what do we meditate on here, we say the breath, and nobody asks, what is that? And then as you get to know it, you begin to realize there's a, there's a lot going on in the breath that you may not have expected. So you've got to learn how to be okay with that. As we're saying today, you have to sometimes just step back and allow things to happen. Sometimes you realize that when you're trying to connect the breath or spread the breath, all you have to do is just think about it, and it'll happen. You don't have to push, you don't have to squeeze. 
you don't have to force things. It's because you have a, an attitude where you can step back and watch. That's how you learn. This applies inside, it applies to things outside as well. And John Mahabhava has a really nice passage where he talks about how when John Munn passed away, he felt lost. He had lost his, his post, the person he could rely on. And then he stopped to think, well, what was it that he kept saying whenever I came to him with an issue? And one of his constant teachings was, if something comes up that you're not really sure whether it's reliable or not, just be with your sense of awareness. On the one hand, that may help you see things about it that you didn't realize before. You might have missed otherwise. Or simply it'll just pass on its own and not do any danger. And it's good to have this attitude that if I don't understand, I'll step back and question my assumptions and feel secure in the stepping back. Because all too often we make a mess of situations because we feel, well, this has to be that way or this should be this way. And our sense of needing things to be that way gets in the way. This is not to say that all preconceived notions are bad. What's bad is our sense of having, needing things to be a certain way. That's what gets in the way. So this is one of the other things we develop as we meditate, is a sense of being sufficient inside. You've got the breath, you've got your awareness. You've got the skills that go around with breath and awareness. That can give the mind the stability to see things more clearly. The strength to follow through on what we know is skillful, or what we see is skillful. And the ability to make sacrifices. That's another thing that gets in the way of our doing the skillful thing. We have to remember it's our skillful actions are our true, our true wealth. And a situation that has to be this way, has to be that way, and our sense of needing that, that's poverty. So we can learn how to question a lot of our sense of what we need in order to have a sense of well-being. In this way we can live in a world that has lots of changes in ways that we don't expect. People we rely on and suddenly find out this. They get old. They get weak. We get old, we get weak. People around us change. Society changes, the economy changes. Climate changes. And as I say, with climate change, it's not just that things were gradually warming up in every way. They, things go through wild swings, and that's the way it is with human life. There are a lot of wild swings back and forth. But we want to be able to be in the middle of it without getting pushed around. Another one of the post images from the Pali Canon is of the well-trained mind, like a post of solid rock, sixteen spans tall, eight spans buried in the ground, so that no matter which direction the winds come from, whether they come from gain or loss, status, loss of status, praise, criticism, pleasure, pain, the post isn't moved. Now the difference, of course, is that the mind is not rock. It's aware. But you can make your awareness that solid. You can see these things come, but you don't have to be shaken by them, because you have an inner sense of well-being, an inner sense of strength, an inner sense of refuge and skill. That's your true wealth. Try to protect your true wealth, and anything else that's not your true wealth and you may have to let it go. There are lots of things we have to let go of in this life. But this inner post is something that's going to see you all the way through.